Okay, cool. On today's episode of the CLS Experience, we have a very special treat. He's a media personality, blogger, a celebrity columnist. He's a badass dream chaser, a trailblazer, and a pioneer. Just an overall juggernaut in all facets of life. Please welcome the iconic Perez Hilton. How you doing, Perez? Good, how are you? I'm doing great, my friend. It's a pleasure to be here today. And and listen, let's just cut right to it. I know a lot of people associate you with all the celebrities and all that stuff, and I admire all of that. But what really gravitated me to you is I, I love the person, the man, and I love the fact that you're a visionary and everything that you've done. And obviously, you've been very strategic with it. And I want to dive into that. Before we start at the beginning, I'd like to get all, start off a little bit weird. I'm going to come out and ask you right away. What is your superpower, Perez? My superpower is my superhuman work ethic. My, my unhealthy work ethic. Um, you know, this concept of balance, I don't have that in my life. Um, you know, my kids obviously are the biggest part of my life, but right beside that is my work. That means that other things suffer. You know, I don't hang out with my friends every night of the week or often, uh, especially now, you know, the things aren't really yet back to normal. I don't really date much. I, I just am a dad and I work, but that really worked for me. You know, I tell people all the time because of the internet and social media, you might be able to luck your way into success but you will never sustain success without an incredible work ethic. And some people are fine being comfortable or moderately successful. If they knew the amount of work that it takes to truly be super successful, there's a lot of people that would say, eh, I'd rather live a less successful life and, you know, just be okay. And that's fine. You know, not everybody is or has to be super ambitious. You know, it's so funny because you're speaking to my soul right now. And, and this podcast is all about revamping minds as an inspiring people. But one thing that I always take pride in saying is if you're looking to understand balance and boundaries, I'm not the guy to ask because I'm still figuring it all out. And I appreciate the fact that you're the same way. Do you think the fact that you work so much has a lot to do with because you're very passionate about what you're doing? I mean, definitely that 17 years later, I wake up with gratitude in my heart because I still love all the things that I do. Some more than others. Um, you know, I, I, I often fantasize about how my life would be different if I had... F you money in the bank <laughs> and I don't, and that's fine. I like to be honest. And, and I think that, you know, people know that I've always been honest in every aspect of my life. I, I released my memoir last year and I talked about a lot of the financial mistakes that I made in the past. If I hadn't made a lot of those stupid decisions and things that happened, I probably would have had F you money in the bank, but that's fine. I, I think actually that having a reason to work and motivation to get up every day and do something is good for the soul. Oftentimes people who come from insanely wealthy families, you know, the, the, par the parents or the grandparents were just multi multimillionaires or billionaires. If you don't have to work for a living, oftentimes those people develop depression or substance abuse issues. So I'm happy that my work still makes me happy. I love all of that. And it's so true. And it's something else that they say is you only start getting old when you retire. But you know, like my dad's in his in his 80s and he still loves to work. And I believe that keeps him like inspired and going. So I appreciate that you say that. Yeah, I mean, my goal is to always work. I, I do fantasize about the FU money because I will always work, but 
I would just be curious to see how things would be different. I think I would definitely allow myself to take a real vacation and not work while on vacation and, um, you know, have real weekends off and not work during the weekends, uh, you know, have a, a real uh, office schedule, you know, set hours. I'm only going to work from this time to that time. And then I'm punching out, but you know, I'm not quite there yet. Got Guys like you and I, it's a blessing and, and, and a curse because most people want to find something they're so passionate about, but we're also trying to find that balance. So it's definitely a work in progress. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, working hard, but I, I'm thankful, you know, one of the things that I have prioritized a lot more now that I'm older and as a result of everything that happened in 2020 is I'm getting more sleep. And that's really helped me a lot. I used to not, for 16 years, I used to only sleep about five, five and a half, four and a half, four, maybe six hours a night because it was work, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. I always had things to do. Now, you know, I'm okay if I don't get it all done today. I'm, okay. I'm fine if I don't answer somebody's email within an hour or two, you know, if I respond within 24 hours, that's fine or whatever. Um, because sleep is important for me yeah. now that I'm in my mid forties. <laughs> yeah, well, 40 years young, let me just say, but I appreciate what you're saying because you're very punctual and you want to get back to everyone. And that says a lot about your character. I wanted to ask you, when did you officially become Perez 2.0? Um, it was a, a work in progress. You know, I began my journey to being a healthier and happier person in 2008. And um, that's been nonstop since then, you know, it's a constant work in progress. You know, I got back into therapy a few months ago and that's been really helpful for me. So I'm, I'm happy, you know, it all goes back to work. Happiness doesn't just happen. I mean, maybe if you're really lucky, but I think for most people, happiness takes work. You know, happiness takes work in, in just like, being present and taking inventory and, and seeing, oh, what makes me happy? What can make me happier? What doesn't make me happy? That requires, you know, awareness, mindfulness. Love that. I always say happiness is inside job. It's so true. And, and I totally agree with that. I think you're one of the, the most important and biggest pioneers and trailblazers ever. I just love your whole story. I love what you did. Did you always have the entrepreneurial spirit in you or is this something you kind of developed right before you got the whole Perez Hilton brand started? You know, I went to school for acting. I am not a quote business person, but what I am is a people person and I'm a communicator an entertainer. So it's almost as important, if not more important to know what people want and know how to get their attention and keep their attention. All the other stuff, you could figure it out. So true. And, and you started this whole thing in a coffee shop. Is that accurate? I, well, I first started in my apartment, but for about three years, every day I was working out of the coffee bean and tea leaf on Sunset and Fairfax. That's awesome. It was crazy. So, yeah. And it took off relatively fast, but what was the vision when you started? The vision was none. I, I didn't set out to create a business. It was a little hobby that turned into something that I could have never imagined. You know, I began in 2004 before there was social media, before there was a TMZ even. Uh, back then, the celebrity magazines weren't even breaking news on their websites. It was just go to people.com to sign up for the magazine. Go to usweekly.com to get a subscription to the magazine. Um, it, it was so. It was pre-social media. It was pre-everything. And... 
there was no blueprint that I could follow. I, I paved my own way and I created the blueprint for many influencers that followed. 100%. In my opinion, you were the original influencer. Well, thanks. I, I say that myself. <laughs> I do my homework because preparation breeds confidence. And, and like I told you earlier on before we went on, I'm such a fan of yours. and I appreciate everything that you did. I love that you said that. When did it really start to gain some traction? Were you like, oh my goodness, I'm onto something big here. I mean, what's wild is I was able to achieve success very quickly, as is often the case on the internet or social media. You know, back then it was the internet. Now people call it social media because there wasn't social media when I started. It was just the internet. Um, but it really helped that nobody was doing what I was doing. So that was, you know, a breath of fresh air for people. And e not that it was easy for me to get attention, but it was, e it, it would be, it was easier than if I would have started now. Now it's such a crowded space. Everybody and their mother does celebrity news, even like every single radio station. They use their radio station's website to talk about celebrity news. It's like, you know, it's so much. But <laughs> no, thankfully, that's why I think my website's still important because there's so much. Nobody has me and what I bring to the table and everything that I cover. And if you go to PerezHilton.com or if you listen to my podcast or if you watch my YouTube, you know, you don't need to check all, you don't need to check all those websites or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. You can, obviously people do, but it's, if you want to be informed and entertained, I'm your one-stop shop. Yes, he is. I can confirm that. And I only launched my podcast six weeks ago, but already approached 50,000 downloads. So to my audience, should you check out Perez has going on? The answer is absolutely. He's on fire. He's a one-stop shop. And because you are, and I know you have a similar personality to me, I wanted to ask you, did you ever have trouble as you continue to grow to be able to delegate and take some like responsibility off of your shoulders onto other people? I never had trouble delegating, but I had trouble trusting. Mm. Meaning you surround yourself with smart people and advisors, and sometimes they advise things that you don't agree with, and then you are doubting yourself. Oh, should I do what they say? And at the end of the day, my biggest advice is just listen to yourself. You don't need advisors. Do your own thing yourself. I mean, you could, cause there's nothing worse than like listening to your advisors and then they cost you a lot of money. And it's like, oh, they told me to do that. And now I'm out a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it might be. Yeah, now that makes sense to me. And another thing that I love about you is you transcended an entire industry. A lot of things that you've been involved in are obviously controversial subject and stuff of that where there's a lot of backlash. And listen, anytime anyone special really takes a shot at life, there's going to be haters. There's going to be backlash. The only time that doesn't happen is if you're just coasting and you're not really taking a shot at life. You've obviously had your share of stuff like that. Is it tough to deal with or have you built tough skin? How does that work for the mindset? I view hate or negative attention or nasty comments. Um, I view all social media interactions in terms of currency. So let's, sit, let's just talk Instagram. If I post a photo on Instagram of my daughter who is gorgeous, I obviously would prefer if, you know, there were no negative comments, but if somebody says, oh, your daughter is so ugly, she's hideous, what a troll, that comment is worth $100. But if somebody leaves a comment saying, your daughter's gorgeous, that comment's worth $1. Because if somebody says, your daughter's gorgeous, cool, people will keep scrolling by. But if somebody goes hard and says, your daughter's the ugliest person on this planet, that'll do one of two things. It, all of the other people who, hate me, will start to pile on and agree, but then the people that love me or support me will start to defend me. 
either way, I win because it's just more engagement and because I don't let negative comments affect me. Uh, and I've definitely, you know, with age appropriate lessons and ways tried to already educate my children about social media and not letting what strangers think about them or about me affect them. I think that's something that all parents should do actually. 100% agree with that. And listen, and like you just said, like it, it's engagement. So it's a win-win for you in regards to taking it personally, you can't, and there's an old expression. I know it's cliche, but you can't throw stones at every dog that barks. Otherwise you'll never be able to move forward. It's, it's inevitable, especially when you're doing epic stuff like you're doing, it's just going to happen. But the fact that you're not able to tie an emotion to it, it's, it's great. It takes a lot of courage. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I noticed recently you've been on a little bit of a, a redemption arc. You know, you've had some falling out with some big celebrities in the past and stuff of that nature. Have you made amends with some of them or what's the thought process by kind of, I don't want to say squashing the beef, but kind of like going on that little bit of a redemption arc? Um, I think I believe in accountability and I believe in karma cleansing. So it's just for me, you know, a way of like, I, I don't, I mean, I do have my own addiction issues, but I'm not addicted to, to substances. I'm addicted to work. I'm addicted to social media. I'm addicted to food. Um, and those are big things, you know, especially because my job is in social media. So it's like, <laughs> oh my God, you're addicted. Like, you're, and, and, and my food addiction, it's something that I struggle with, but I think I've got a good uh, grasp on it and um, relationship with it now. Um, I would say, you know, in NA or AA, that's one of the steps to healing is you reach out to people in the past that you've screwed over to say it bluntly. And, um, you know, I've, I've done that and I continue to do that even, you know, in, in um, December, a few months ago, I had a very public emotional break. We call it a break, not a breakdown because, you know, it was needed. And it was like a vacation. <laughs> and I came back from that stronger and, and better as a result of it. So yeah, it, it, it has been a conscious effort, but not for any public reasons, for private reasons. Yeah, and, and that's what it's all about. Cause that's, you know, for your soul. I know recently you tried to reach out to Lady Gaga and meant that, right? I have, yeah. Um, but you know, she's happily living her life and like, I don't wanna be her friend. I just want, I wanna hear her out and I want her to hear me out because I think both of us were really hurt by the other. Yeah, I appreciate that. Same thing with Britney Spears or no? Yeah, I reached out to Britney as well, way before this documentary that came out. Good. I love that. And, and I love the fact that you're doing it for the right reasons, not necessarily what the tabloids say or anything like that. You know, I have to ask you, because I, as I mentioned earlier on the conversation, I think you're such a trailblazer and a pioneer, and I appreciate everything that you build. It's incredible. You know, people have opinions about people, and I'm sure there's a lot of opinions about you, but one thing that's undeniable is what you built. It's so special. Who were some of the people that you look up to? Like, who do you sharpen the ax to? Who were some people that may have been indirect mentors to you that get you excited? I mean, my three, my top three growing up, my role models and inspirations in different ways uh, were Madonna, Oprah Winfrey, and Gloria Stefan. That's a great three right there. And, and I've heard you, because like I told you, I do my homework. I heard you say in the past that, you know, one of the coolest moments for you was when you got that call that Oprah wanted to do an interview. What was that like for you? That was insane because I grew up on Oprah, you know, I would, I'd come home from school in the nineties and I would watch her show every day as a young kid. And I didn't even pitch myself to be on Oprah. They reached out to me. So it was wild and surreal. And then we filmed for, it was part of her, um, I forget what it was called, Super Soul Sessions. I don't, I don't remember what it was called, but it was a live event that was filmed for 
the oxygen network and it, i was on stage in radio city music hall with her and with deepak chopra wild <laughs> that's awesome and also you said madonna in her prime what a pioneer forget about it right i mean i don't think there's any other female artist that has more hits maybe there is i don't know but um you know she just had so many hits top 10 hits like big smash songs and constantly reinventing and outlasted the shelf life of a female pop star which unfortunately isn't as long as that of a male pop star because pop music is very ageist and radio you know they grow tired of people oh we played them so much already like you know look at Beyonce even you know she doesn't have radio hits anymore and she's also smartly stopped catering to radio she's like I'm not even going to try for radio hits anymore I'm going to make what I want to make because she understands that there's a timeline for these things um but also Beyonce had an incredibly long radio career starting with Destiny's Child. So yeah, you know, Madonna, you know, and continue, Madonna continues to be an inspiration. She's still going strong. You mentioned radio and I think that's so important because now obviously the landscape has changed because now everything is streamed and you download it on Spotify or Apple Music. Do you think that affects how people release their music these days? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for the better, I think, um, uh, streaming has helped to democratize music because, you know, radio used to and still only plays the same, you know, seven or eight people all the time. Love that. You, my friend, have built an absolute empire. You've done so much. It's unthinkable and it's so special. What's the vision going forward for the Perez Hilton brand? I definitely want to continue to, you know, diversify and be more entrepreneurial. So I'm working with a new manager that I started working with last year, which I'm very excited about. And we've got some really big things coming soon. Oof, love that. And because my show is all about mindset, you've been through so much and so much I respect and I appreciate for the audience listening, because this will be very valuable to them. Obviously, the good times are the good times, but through the tough times, the challenges that we all face, what's the number one most important character trait to develop to push through adversity and overcome challenges, in your opinion, based upon your experience? It's, I mean, I think the word is tenacity, but I, yeah, tenacity is better than motivation because you don't always have motivation, but if you have tenacity, you just don't give up. You just keep going. You know, it's like like the gym, right? Like some mornings you wake up and you're not motivated to work out, but you do it anyways. And that's what matters. Yeah. So yeah, just tenacity to keep going and not dwelling on the bad. Being really busy is a good thing. You just, well, I've, I've still got work to do. I gotta keep working. Yeah. I can't cry for eight hours, you know? See, I love this. I knew we would manufacture magic here today, but just seeing the similarities and I appreciate your vision so much. What do you want your legacy to be when it's all said and done, Press? That he was the best father. Love that. That's so special. I know my audience is going to fall in love with you in two seconds in case they didn't know you, which they obviously do. Where do you hang out the most? Where can they find you? Well, if you liked me here, you can listen to my podcast, the Perez Hilton podcast with Chris Booker. You can check it out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or directly at perezpodcast.com. I'm also, you know, on my website, on every social media platform. And um, yeah, that's that. I absolutely love that. And I just want to say, my friend, you don't shy away from your challenges as they've shaped you. It's something I find very relatable and liberating. I want you to know that you are the definition of perseverance, grit, and heart from building the empire that is the Perez Hilton brand, a digital dynasty, to your redemption arc of becoming Perez 2.0. You're a pioneer, icon, and an amazing father to your three kids. 
I could personally guarantee that your best is yet to come. You're someone I admire, I appreciate, and I respect very much. And I can't wait to continue to watch you fly. Oh, that's so incredibly kind. Thank you. I believe that life has taught me the future, whatever may come, I'm going to be very happy. And that's, and the best is yet to come because, and I'm not even just talking professionally, the best is yet to come because I know I'm going to get happier. I'm going to continue to make changes to be the happiest, fullest person that I can be. So I'm very excited about that. I love that. Happiness is an inside job. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, other things help. External things help. Money is nice going to concerts and things like that. But the last few months, especially have taught me, I don't need all of that to be happy. I can just go for a walk with my kids and be happy. Like just going for a walk. That's free. And we go to the park that the, their favorite park isn't even the big park, a little park with a big rock and they climb on the rock and then they slide down the rock and we just, I'm, I don't know. I, I feel like with my kids and my mom, like all is good. I could sense that you've cultivated a, a great attitude of gratitude. Yeah. Every Isn't morning it? you have to be grateful. It's the Did first you, thought into my brain. Do you have a routine in the morning where like you maybe meditate or just say thanks or something of that nature? I just think of gratitude and I try to take three breaths or six, three to six, maybe just three. <laughs> they say either one, it just a few conscious breaths, like while you're thinking of gratitude thoughts, like breathing in gratitude. So that's what I do. And then I work out, I make my coffee and then I work out at 6 a.m. I saw you've been doing some yoga. Well, that's an old photo, but oh. uh, yeah, I'm doing live Zoom fitness classes. Nice. And that's been convenient. Yeah, it's coming so along. I can do it from home. Yeah, yeah. Let's see the guns. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I don't care about that anymore. I'm not working out with weights, you know, uh, it's body weight work, but it's really effective. Calisthenics. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Good. I appreciate you very much, my friend. I appreciate your time today and I can't wait to see what's next for you. Thank you. My pleasure.